Hey everybody, what's up? Welcome to a new episode of Comics. All the theme song. brand new this week but just um, had a lot of specials you know recently with the, with the Christmas special and the video game special but we're just back to a regular new episode of comics so first of all I'm gonna hand it over to Richard for the DC comic side of things so take it away Richard oh wow I'm going first this week oh I wasn't prepared huh. see even my camera's going out of focus that's how unprepared I am on the DC comic side of things I'm gonna review the entire uh, first arc of Scott Snyder's run on Detective Comics. So the story that's going on in uh, Detective Comics right now that Scott Snyder and uh, Jock are doing, Dick Grayson, he's pretty much, you know, a little uncomfortable. He's not 100% in the mindset of being Batman of Gotham City since Bruce is back. And at the same time, uh, there's this new villain in Gotham City called The Dealer. A creepy looking kind of auctioneer who sells stolen police evidence of uh, that used to belong to big time criminals like the Joker, Mad Hatter, Penguin, all those guys, and sells them to regular Gothamites. Right off the bat, a uh, huge fan of Scott Snyder. This has just probably been, if not the best, one of the best uh, runs of Detective Comics I've read in a very, very long time. Uh, the story is very much, you know, traditional Batman style. Like, it's very intricate. It's very, uh, it's very engaging. It's very. It feels very much like uh, what Chris Nolan's doing with uh, the Batman movies right now, which is awesome. And Jock's art. I mean, look at these covers. Even the boring, you know, DC icon covers. This is one of the best. Overall, uh, great first run on Detective Comics. Ooh. <laughs> great first run on Detective Comics. Uh, Scott, Jock, you're doing a fantastic job, and I can't wait to see uh, the, re the continuation of the co-feature in the very next issue with Francisco Francavilla. So, uh, Obvious 5 out of 5 for this series. There you go. Now I'm going to mosey on out of here so that you guys can get to the, the hot button topic of this week on comics, which is... For the Marvel side of things, I'm going to be reviewing a comic that is probably the biggest comic out there in Marvel right now. Fantastic Four, number 587. The big deal about this comic is that it is the conclusion to 3, where one of the Fantastic Four is going to die. And, um, spoiler alert, which is more than I can say Marvel gave to us. But um, if you don't know who it is already, stop watching now, pause it or something. The person who dies is... Give me a few seconds to pause it if you don't know already. The Human Torch. It was no surprise to anyone when they actually read the comic because the internet and Marvel themselves released it before the day the comic came out, yeah but early in the morning before anyone even had a chance to get it. At least the Human Torch is who I guessed it would be in the first place, so you know it's not that big of a shock. Um, if it was someone like, you know, like Mr. Fantastic or someone that I would be, I would have been upset that it got spoiled. This little thing that came in, like the body bag, it was a pretty good idea. Um, except for the fact that I kind of wanted to keep it, you know, as some sort of like memento, but it's freaking really hard to open. It's like a garbage bag. Look, that's as neat as I could open. It's like my dog got to it, so I, I don't want to keep this, but what, what's the deal with that? It doesn't seem worth it. It's a minor complaint. Let's get to the review. Um, Mr. Fantastic's doing his own thing. Mrs. Fan- Mrs. Fantastic. Susan Richards is doing her own thing. And then Ben Grimm and Johnny Storm are doing their own thing. They're all in treacherous situations and, you know, you're just waiting for some one of them to die. It is the Human Torch who dies, and it's a great way for him to die. He sacrifices himself for Ben Grimm, the thing, and, um, Reed and Sue's children. Alan Hickman really handled it beautifully. Uh, look, you can see this spread is his actual death scene as he's um, devoured alive pretty harsh. Here's his final stand. I, as I've said before, I don't think Alan Hickman wanted this to be a gimmick. He really wants this to stick, you know, more so than comic book deaths have in the past. But my guess is that whenever Hickman leaves the series, some new authors could pick it up not know what to do with three characters, just bring them back from the dead for sales or whatever, and that'll be that. Time being, it was this was a true, truly emotional issue. Um, it's one that we've been waiting for for a long time. I think he nailed it. I give it a five out of five. Pick it up. I mean, even if you didn't get a chance to read it and find out for yourself, and now you already know that he dies, it's still worth the read. It really is. Um, and then pick up next issue too, because that is the last issue of Fantastic Four, um, at least for the time being. 
before um, Fantastic Three officially starts. So yes, that is our show. Um, we will see you next week with another brand new episode. Do not forget to follow Carter and I on Facebook and Twitter, the comics Facebook and Twitter, as well as the Channel 23 Ha 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 Facebook. Check out last week's vlog uh, where I want you guys to ask me a question for the 100th video. Any question you want, I really don't care. Also, last week's episode of comics, and like this video and subscribe to the channel. See you next week!